Magnus Mitbo is a pro climber and popular YouTuber who spent years training for American Ninja Warrior. He uploaded dozens of videos of him training before he announced that he would officially be on American Ninja Warrior. And then nothing happened. Well, it turns out that NBC wiped the hard drives. The moment Magnus was on American Ninja Warrior and everything before that is gone. You can't find it, it doesn't exist. NBC destroyed it. So the question is, what did Magnus do? Was his performance truly so incredible that NBC had to completely destroy all knowledge of it? No, it turns out that uh, one of the guys that was on this episode with Magnus was a pedophile and he got convicted right after this episode aired. So NBC was like, fuck it, get rid of everything before this guy <laughs> existed. You are the man. But thankfully, due to my own secret resources, I was able to find American Ninja Warriors USA vs. The World 2021 with Magnus Mitbo. And to spice things up even more this season, we have a new challenger. And who better to turn things upside down than the Australians? So Australia's first competitor is this chick who's known for doing this special move on the warp wall, right? They show it like 40 times before she actually goes. And uh, you know, it's pretty cool, but I did think it was funny because she gets to the warped wall in round one and does the move again, which the announcers have seen like a hundred times at this point, and they give this super fake YouTuber reaction to it. And look at this! What? Are you kidding me? He's like, oh, whoa, did, did you see that? Yeah, dude, you've seen it like a hundred times already. You were the announcer and all of those clips that they showed leading up to this. She also pulls off this perfect Super Mario ground pound. Ooh. But she ends up finishing the entire course, setting the stage for Team Europe, which for the sake of this video, we're gonna call Team Magnus. And Team Magnus does not come out the gate swinging. Just attack this fourth obstacle now. Oh no! After Team Europe fails, the Aussies are pretty hyped, so they start doing their chant, you know, the Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. And the Americans have yet to go, so they decide to counter this with a little bit of USA. USA. And then, you know, the Europeans got to join in. So the Europeans are like, uh, we don't have a thing. It's a grand old flag. A high flag. I don't know this. I do not know this one. But the American contestant ends up completing the course slightly faster than the Aussie, meaning that the USA gets two points. Australia gets one point and Europe is at the bottom with zero points. So we move into heat two of round one where Team Magnus is ready to pick up the pace. Including Sasuke in Japan. Oh no! Oh my goodness! So once again, Team Magnus has an early slip up and once again, Team USA finishes the entire course and Heat 2 is left in the hands of the next Aussie competitor. And this competitor really stood out to me because uh, if you've watched my game show reviews before, you know, I hate the backstories. My least favorite thing in all of these is going deep into their backstories. They always go way too long and they always make some big sob story out of nothing. And uh, this guy completely turned that upside down. Very, <laughs> very Australian thing to do. It turns out this guy had a traumatic brain injury, which sent him into a coma for three weeks before miraculously waking up, surviving, and then dedicating his life to being an American Ninja Warrior. Holy shit, <laughs> that's, that's, that's wild. That's a real backstory. If everybody was like this guy, I would watch the backstories more often. So, you know, he goes into the course, he does pretty well uh, until he doesn't. I just like to say, if I get a traumatic brain injury from doing crazy athletic stuff that sent me into a coma and I somehow survived, I would not dedicate my life to doing more athletic stuff. I would probably do the polar opposite. I would just like, dedicate my life to RuneScape and like Yu-Gi-Oh card collecting. And I'd be like, you know, I'm, ha I'm happy with this. This is enough for me. So the Aussies still made it far enough to get second place in heat two, making the score now four to two to zero, which leads to the final heat of round one where Europe really has to pick up their game, right? They put putting in athletes after athletes, no dice, nothing's working. So they decide let's change things up a little bit and we'll send in not a professional athlete, but a rapper. Now, what should have been an easy point for Team Australia uh, ends up kind of biting them in the ass because the Australian competitor comes out like a bat out of hell and <laughs> tries to fly through the course as fast as possible and just completely 
eat shit, almost gets himself killed. <laughs> he, he has the worst landing I've ever seen. I guess it's a rule on the Australian Ninja Warrior team that everybody has to be in a coma at least once. So this guy's just paying his dues. And this leads us to our final competitor of round one, where Team USA puts in one of their best ninjas. And all she has to do is finish the course. If she finishes the course, Team USA gets first place. But the problem is she's done this course multiple times. She's an experienced ninja, but she's never been able to complete it. Every single time she gets to the final obstacle, the rope wall, she gets all tangled up or misses the jump and she ends up falling in. So Jessie makes it past all the other competitors. She makes it up the warped wall. And now all she has to do is complete the rope wall. What does she have left out of the grip? No! So this is a pretty big moment for her. She won heat three for Team USA and finally completed round one. She's hyped, she's hugging her teammates. She doesn't hug Drew, which <laughs> it's a smart choice. Stay away from that guy. Although I think she's like 20, so you know she's probably too old, <laughs> too old for him anyway. And now the score at the end of round one is six to two to one. And I know a lot of you've been scratching your head this whole time, like, eh, come on, when are you gonna tell us how you found this? Right? We've been looking for years. There's Reddit posts about it. Everybody's wondering how can I watch Magnus on American Ninja Warrior. So how am I the lucky individual that found it? Well. Uh, I do have a secret little tool that allows me to watch pretty much anything I want to whenever I want, and it's called NordVPN. I've said this before, but I've been using NordVPN for five years now. I started just like most of you probably, right? I was like, I guess I'll try it, right? I'm not going to use it for a long time. I'll just give it a little dabble because I wanted to watch Malcolm in the Middle on Netflix, and I was living in Italy at the time. So they were like, oh, no, 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 Italians not allowed to watch, not allowed to watch Malcolm in the Middle. But Americans, you guys are all right. So. I got NordVPN, click the little button, it takes two seconds, hit America, bing, bang, boom, I can watch Malcolm in the Middle. There are so many shows and movies on streaming platforms that are just completely region locked. You cannot watch because of where you live that the moment you download Nord, NordVPN, the moment you download NordVPN, you got everything at your fingertips. Not to mention on YouTube alone, you can connect to certain places like, I don't know, Poland. <laughs> That's always my example. You can connect to Poland and watch entire seasons of American Ninja Warrior. They're uploaded on YouTube right now. You just can't find them because you probably live in like America or some lame place like that where they don't let you watch copyrighted material. So click the link in the description below and get four free months of NordVPN. I should probably do the, the, you can't tell this is four. Four free months of NordVPN. It's risk-free, uh, 30 day money back guarantee. Try it out. Now let's get into round two. So round two, Team USA starts off strong with an American Ninja Warrior legend, Daniel Gill. And he does what's probably one of the hardest looking obstacles I've ever seen on American Ninja Warrior. Well, this is really a mental game. Visualize the landing, go! So obviously it goes without saying, Daniel completed all of round two, meaning that Team USA still has yet to have a single competitor fall the entire time. And my assumption was, you know, Team Magnus was gonna have to take the L on this one, right? They weren't gonna make it very far. But then I realized who they had up next. Anton Fomenko. You see, in almost every single video that Magnus did training for Ninja Warrior, there was one man by his side, Anton. And Anton more than proved himself as a extremely capable American Ninja Warrior. He's probably one of the best I've ever seen if you watch Magnus's videos. So I was like, all right, he might be the only one that stands a chance at beating Daniel Gill. Here initially through that first obstacle. Oh my! I don't think anybody expected that to happen. Magnus looks like a general watching his empire crumble. If you look back at all the old videos of Magnus and Anton, Anton is a beast at the salmon ladder. Like he's better than your average ninja warrior. So it was really weird to see him just fall on a regular salmon ladder maneuver like that. I mean, everybody slips up from time to time, but uh, Team Europe sure is slipping up a lot. Sorry, Team Magnus. Team Magnus <laughs> sure is slipping up a lot. And this once again puts Team I'll Show You in a pretty good position where they're pretty much guaranteed second place as long as they make it past the salmon ladder, which was like the first obstacle. And Team I'll Show You really brought out the big guns with their next competitor, who they call the Barefoot Ninja. The Barefoot Ninja is a legend in the American Ninja Warrior community known for doing everything barefoot from hiking trails to going to public restrooms. And the first thing that NBC made him do before competing was put on shoes because you're not allowed to be barefoot. For safety reasons, he always has to wear shoes when he runs the ninja course. <laughs> it's like, this dude has custom merch 
this like barefoot ninja and he's like known for being the barefoot ninja but you're not allowed to compete in american ninja warrior barefoot it's like who, where the fuck are you the barefoot ninja then <laughs> it's like dude the moment i saw them making him put, put on shoes I know this is taken away from the video. I just that was the funniest thing in the world to me. He's the fucking barefoot ninja. He's not even fucking barefoot. So the barefoot ninja actually gets pretty far. He makes it to the over under thing. Uh, and I swear, I thought he knocked himself out on this thing because he planks pretty hard. But turns out he was just doing the like waterfall thing. But either way, he gets second place, making the score nine to four to two. So we move into the final heat of round two where the Australians finally get a win and have one of their competitors complete the course. And Europe is put in a pretty sticky situation here. They really got to pull out a big win here or they have no chance of winning. And you know how I said I hate the backstories, right? Like I usually just skip through them. Well, the next competitor from Team Europe was from Bosnia and he grew up in Bosnia in the early to mid 90s. And in the early to mid 90s, Bosnia had a civil war. I remember being waking up in the middle of the night, hearing gunshots and, and soldiers running down the street. So this dude grew up as a child during the Bosnian Civil War, which NBC also, to make it more family friendly, doesn't mention, they still downplay it, that uh, the Bosnian Civil War is also known as the Bosnian Genocide. Dude, imagine having to follow that. <laughs> like you're in the room where you're all giving your stories and this dude talks about growing up in the middle of a fucking genocide in Bosnia, and then it's your turn, and you're just like, I, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I, I think I'm good. And the producer's like, no, tell the story you were gonna tell about the time, you know, when you stubbed your toe, you had the ingrown toenail, you stubbed your toe, it changed your life forever. Remember, that was a great, <laughs> great story. But the Bosnian dude actually does do pretty good. He doesn't make it as far as the Australian, but he does beat the American, meaning that Team Europe now has seven points. And now it's time for the final round, round three. And every team technically still has a chance to win, but Team Europe, needs first place if they're going to make it to the finals. And Team Europe's final competitor is none other than Magnus Mitbo. Norway is known for fjords, fish, mountains. Those are not the first things I think of when I think of Norway. I think of uh, oil, because Norway has massive oil reserves. It's probably, now that I think about it, a pretty American <laughs> thing to say. Like, we're all just obsessed with oil. Money. But now that Magnus is up, we're going to break down each obstacle of round three, because this is a climbing channel. We got to go into how each one applies to climbing. And I even, I even came up with my own names for each one to make them a little more climbing related. So all you climbers watching would understand, you know, a little bit more about the obstacles. So we start with the sloper slide. You gotta hold on. Have to slide those cylinders down those frames. That is a full arm workout. Matt, back to back to back to back. You're not gonna take Magnus down on some slopers. And the second obstacle, I like to call the fleshlight campus. Using those handles, those at the top, he has to slide in and out of the slots. I don't know if it was his experience with campusing or fleshlights, but he absolutely killed this obstacle. He then takes a break, slaps some mag dust in his face, extra power, and moves on to what I call the, the clock obstacle. It's called crazy clocks. I couldn't think of a better name. This was the only obstacle I was a little bit worried about because this is the like least rock climbing obstacle in here. Like laches are just, you just don't do them in rock climbing at all. But thankfully Magnus trained, he was able to nail the laches and move on to the next obstacle, which was the block uh, campus climb thing. <laughs> and I will say one thing that bummed me out about this obstacle was the edges are 50 millimeter edges. So it's like not even a crimp at that point. It's just a flat top. And I really wish they would do one of these with like 20 millimeter crimps so that people like Magnus can just cruise. It would look exactly the same. Let's be honest. Magnus would go just as fast on 20 millimeter crimps, but none of the other competitors would even stand a chance, which kind of defeats the point of the show. It's just a climbing show at that point, but we're here to see climbers win. And at this point, it looks like Magnus is going to be Team Europe's saving grace, right? Round three is supposed to be the hardest round. They get harder each time. So the odds of anyone else making it as far as him or completing round three are very low. So it looks like as long as Magnus can get a little bit further, he'll take it home for Team Europe. Work his way across the poles. Oh no! So I really wanted to break down exactly <laughs> what happened to make Magnus fail round three. I still cannot figure out how this obstacle works. I have no, what the fuck is this thing? But Magnus gave it his best shot. He made it pretty far. And surprisingly, Team Australia actually makes it just as far as Magnus is. The competitor uh, made it just as far and falls on the same obstacle, but he got there slower. Meaning there is only one person that can ruin this for Team Magnus. And that is the person competing for Team USA. And that person is none other than the pedophile Drew Dreschel himself. 
out of respect to NVC, I was going to avoid showing uh, Drew's run on here because that's the whole reason they don't want this up. But, uh, you know, how was I supposed to know that the, the tiebreaker, the one person competing directly against Magnus was going to be Drew Dreschel? How was I supposed to know? I knew. <laughs> I 100% I, I knew. Why do you think I'm making this video? It's hilarious. The one person that stands in the way of Team Magnus's victory is the, the worst person to ever be on American Ninja Warrior. And he easily cruises through every single obstacle all the way up to the point where Magnus fell. And this was the point of no return, if we're being honest. Like, he got there faster than any of them. So even if he fell on this obstacle, uh, he still would have won. Team Magnus was already doomed at this point. But I thought I'd point out... Uh, he keeps going. So not only did he make it through the same part of the course the other two competitors did in a much faster time, but he also makes it all the way to the end of round three and completes the course. And I hate to say it because I was really looking for a reason to shit on this guy or something to make fun of. This dude's got swag. For a pedophile, he's got a lot of swag. Look at this buzzer swag here. The way he hits the buzzer like a ninja with a staff at the end. But for those of you that feel defeated, like there's no justice in the world, or like, great. So we watched this whole video. Magnus didn't even dominate the game show and a uh, team pedophile is gonna win. But you forget one thing, there's a tiebreaker. And you remember that young stud from Australia that I barely talked about earlier? Well, he's the designated rope climber and he's fast as hell. Oh, he's saying good day, mate. He is pulling he's your a good day. And Bryson Klein has done it. So we got to see Magnus showcase some pro rock climbing skills on American Ninja Warrior. And while we didn't get the satisfaction of seeing him win, we did at least get to see the Australians come in and save the day by defeating the pedophile known as Drew Dressel. Dressel, it doesn't matter how I say his name. He's in prison now. I can say your name however I want. If you guys want to watch the whole episode and any other American Ninja Warrior episodes that have been scrubbed from the internet, try out NordVPN, and I'll see you guys next uh, tomorrow, whenever I make another video.